What's going on, everybody? We are at You Kitchen. A lot of people believe that You Kitchen, which are Liaoning Northeastern style Chinese dumplings, Dongbei, have the best dumplings best. in Southern California and possibly America. The best in America. Okay. So many Dongbei people have come. They're everywhere now. They're opening up restaurants. Oh. We're gonna be eating a lot of different styles of dumplings, and we're gonna get back in the kitchen and we're gonna cook with them a little bit. Oh, word? Yes. I'm because you didn't know. I'm because Nelson, you, you you don't find Nelson in the kitchen very often. I thought I was just gonna eat. Yo, the best dumplings in America. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, so we are outside of the window of you kitchen with IE Mary right here. Hi, yeah. hi. Everything is freshly handmade here. They have a window wide open for you to see that it's fresh. Hey, you can teach us how to make a little bit of that jazz. Wow, please, please, I'll teach you. Oh, let's get it. Okay, let's do it. You are home, coming, please. Right now, we are here with Mary, and we're gonna be making one, a jiaozi, which is a traditional dumpling, and then we're gonna be making a hezi, which is more of like a pocket. Okay. So what you're doing is flattening it while you stretch it, and you're rotating it so that you're flattening it into a circle. Alma? I'm a dumpling maker. Mine looks like a potato. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She said she owned a restaurant in Liaoning, so it's the same thing we got over here. Hey, she's doing the same thing she was doing out there, but That's over here. Me, we'll Pull the bottom, okay, and you're gonna yeah. touch the top. Oh, so it's like a heart you put it together. Yes. Squeeze it like this. Boom. Shout out to this though. Boom. <laughs> okay, yo, we are gonna do a jiu tai hezi. Jiu tai means chive in Chinese, and it's a chive pancake. Yeah, the shape is super northern. There was a group of people that took over China, they don't have their country anymore, called Manchuria. And Man the Manchus also have heavily influenced Liaoning food, northeastern Chinese food. Okay. Oh. Okay, so fold it over once. Okay, so kind of like a dumpling. Just a little flour. Hey, you want some? No? Pull the corner in. This is where you get the pattern. And okay. then, oh, yeah. Nelson got the little uh, twisties going. Oh. Yeah. Yo, that looks like a twirl, bro. Hey. Hey. hey, people have been talking about making dumplings a lot because I think it is such a kind of cultural thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a yeah. soulful yeah. thing. When we have family gatherings and we're prepping the food, a lot of them just get together to make every type of dumplings and stuff like that. Oh, man, I eat. Thank you. All right, we have some food in front of us, but right off the bat, we got chopsticks and hot water. You know what they're doing. They are cleaning these, keeping them clean. Yo, it's cool how they show you that it's in hot water. A lot of spots, they won't show you. Every restaurant in China, you have to clean your chopsticks, your spoons, your bowls with some hot water. Isn't it true that when they come to America, they lose a lot of these like little fun traditions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But they, they, they keeping them. them. They keeping them here at You Kitchen, though. We got steamed dumplings. You can get them pan fried. You can get them boiled. You can get them steamed here. Okay. Pan fried, we all know that's a whole different thing. But steamed and boiled, a lot of people kind of think that it's interchangeable. Steaming, it's a little bit less American. Shaolin Bao's, everybody knows these are Shanghainese, right? Yep, yeah. so let me hit you with the vinegar, black vinegar. More, 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 more. I, more, I can't, more, I can't more, go. More. I just make a drip, drip, make a hey, drip, yo, make a hey, drip. Hey, what do you think, Asian tiger? So the shaolin bao, this is the thing about steaming shaolin baos. I don't think boiling would work because boiling is a little bit more rougher and it could break them easier. We didn't come here for the Shanghainese dumplings, even though these are delicious. Mm. You ate it already? You gotta do your job? No. I don't know if they gave us the ones we actually made, but <laughs> here's the thing. The ones that look ugly is the other ones yeah. we made. You can tell about steamed dumplings, it's a little bit shinier. It's a little bit drier on the outside, but it's still moist. That has a lot of ginger in it. Ah. You taste the ginger? It yeah, almost tastes right like gurung chong. You know the Cantonese ginger scallion sauce? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a, you are making the jiu chai. Oh, ours! Oh, 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 oh. 
Which one is fake? Which one is real? Yo, I know I made this one. Yo, everybody grab their geotai hoods that they made. Bro, bro. All right. Oh my god, this oh. thing is hot. It's hot. Ooh, yo, it's yo, chill, bro. Chill. So That's David cool. likes more soy sauce. I like more vinegar. I like that bite. I'm the soy sauce. I like soy, soy sauce, soy sauce. I make a little incision. And then here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this rip for you guys. Oh my gosh! Oh my god! So the Jiltai hoods that we made is different than this one. Most places are gonna look like chive, egg, some vermicelli, but this, if you see how juicy that is, good let it go, listen, baby. Yo. I love that this is the chive pancake with shrimp. That's pretty good. Maybe because I made it. <laughs> This is a big mouth pocket, aka a da tui bing. The only place in LA that serves this. It's a pork parsley, or as uh, they might call it, cilantro is called the Chinese parsley. Big, big mouth, mouth pocket. pocket. It reminds you of eating a sandwich. Yeah. It feels light. Not too heavy. It feels light, not, it's not flaky. Juicy. It's a little bit dry and crispy mm -hmm. on the outside, but juicy and flavorful on the inside. Northern Chinese food is very sandwich-like. It is, in a way, more hearty and heavier than Cantonese food. Oh, this is okay. Yo, you guys. Alright, this one's kind of hard to tell. They got the sour cabbage dumplings. No, this is actually using German sauerkraut. Sauerkraut dumpling. It better not be hot as heck. I've never had it with almost like the Polish. Wow, that's right, yeah. Sauerkraut. But tastes really good though. This is a, a special type of red yellow fish dumpling. Mm. You can tell it's fish because it's light colored. It doesn't have the greens in it. Fish, fish dumplings. dumplings. That is very fishy. Mm. In a good way, though. Yeah. yeah. Chicken corn shrimp on these wow. ones. I believe that we had uh, every style of dumpling now except the pan fried. I'm looking at all these mm. dumplings. I've never ate so many in my life. Hot, hot. For the chicken corn shrimp, I absolutely prefer pan fried. On the things with the lighter thing, I like the more intense crust. When it's a thinner skin, I like it pan fried. But if it's a thicker skin, I like it steamed and boiled. Chive pork and shrimp. Oh my gosh. This classic. This might be one of my favorite. The OG, wow, right? the, dumpling, the OG, bro. the OG, the OG. I just bit my mouth, and the vinegar kind of stings, but yo, it's worth it. Your food actually adjusts to the climate. If you look at the northern foods, the more northern you get, it's super heavy. Ooh. Like they can't grow rice as much in the north, so instead of rice, you're getting wheat. Here we have the northern style jajang mian. Now. I love this because this is a style that we grew up with. Look how thick that is. You Yo, don't even need that much sauce. It covers yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. Hey, you guys, you guys, while we're waiting for this, I gotta go back and get one of Yo, those ginger scallion ginger, joints. Ginger scallion joints. joints. You want another one? Let yeah, me try I, these. I remember, I had to go back, back and get another back. ginger scallion. Tastes like mom. Yeah. This one's sweet. These aren't your average noodles. Look at that. They definitely have their own style of the beef noodle soup. Like, Yo, those are some thick noodles, man. Hit it the thick with the double C. Yep. Dog, these are not even noodles. These are straight up dumpling skins. Yeah. <laughs> just passed together. These are ribbons. Elongated dumplings. These are just ribbons. This might be the thickest noodle that I've ever had in my life. Look at that. These are hand torn noodles. That beef cube was juicy. The soup is really good. I actually really like the noodles. The noodles are not as heavy as I thought. They break down really easily. If you guys know, me and Andrew are half Southern and half Northern Chinese. The coastal food, Andrew, is never spicy. Most of the spicy food that you find is more inland. It's more in the central part of China, which is your Hunan, Sichuan, Xi'an. It used to be if you're Southern, you don't take spice. Yeah. Nowadays, it's all changed up, It's right? changed up. I actually like, like spicy a lot more now. I can't handle it like super spicy. This is the Neuro Dream Bing. It's just a literally like a grilled roll. You could think of it as a tortilla burrito. or a pancake, burrito. It's just beef, parsley, green cilantro, a sweet bean sauce. Beef, beef rolls. rolls. Neuro Dream Bing. Uh, we did cover this dish before in the Shandong episode with Jimmy Zong, which was shot at Noodle 101 Express, which is actually next door to here. Um, and that was actually started by a Shandong person, so there is some crossover. The ratio between the beef and, you know, the veggies is like good ratio, like 50-50. A lot of spots will be like a lot more veggie or a lot more beef. The outside is not as crispy or fried as yes. a lot of other spots, so it tastes a little bit more like a tortilla or, if you guys have had it, a high roller. I could see some people saying that this more traditional version is less delicious, but in a way, it's more eatable me. The eatability factor, I'm just creating that word right now. The eatability factor is higher. Mm. A lot of this food is like war food. In the northern China, it's like there's a lot of war. Like you gotta fight the Manchurians, you gotta fight Mongolians, Japanese, everybody. Like, Well, you know how like Mulan was fighting in the snow? That was taking place in the north. And so this is like army food if you think about it. Like this will keep you warm. It's like cold weather, kind of like hearty like war food too. Like lighting up the fireworks, trying to shoot the hun. <laughs> This is the tzuma dabing. It's a big sesame cake. Big sesame. Or big sesame cake. pancake. Yo, does this look like that Millie crepe? Oh, With the thousand layer of milk. 
<laughs> yeah, let me show you the insides. Wow, how much, look at the layers. One of the things you're supposed to do with this is definitely dip it in soup because this is so thick. By itself, it doesn't have yeah. that much flavor, but it has a little hint of the green onion, which I like, has a sesame. It, it was lacking in flavor, honestly. Yeah. Very light. If you guys are never gonna go to China, just come to you Kitchen. There's so many things here, from Mary Ai to the way they clean the chopsticks. It feels like China. Yeah. But like, maybe cleaner. I mean, they have an A rating. This is an incredibly classic dish. This is Jia Chai Rou Si, diced pork pickled mustard noodle soup. Around China, this is almost like the PB and J or the ham and cheese sandwich. Not something that's very lauded, not something that receives a lot of attention, obviously like a Shaolong Bao. The pickled mustard is gonna add that flavor. Pork has a lot of flavor, you get the noodles, oh, man. the carb. So I actually did a study abroad one time in Shanghai in college. They had an expat cafeteria for all the you know international students, but I would go to the Chinese cafeteria and I'd buy these meal tickets from this little center because I, I wanted to to live like what a Chinese thing. Yeah. Not the most sexy dish. Let me add some sexiness to it though. When you see the sesame seeds in the chili oil, let me tell you this, it is next level. Cha Cha Rosa, I'ma sex it up like the... Not the Isley Brothers, Fung Brothers. <laughs> mm. Yo, you <Whoa>. got <laughs> Backfiring. The soup is very clean. It's not very heavy, but it doesn't like hit you really hard. Workers, they don't want to eat something that's gonna make them really heavy and then they're gonna be sluggish after they work. Even so. at like KFC in China, you can order a meal where it's like a piece of fried chicken and then this. Wow, Shang Wu Xinku. Wow. So we've got honey green tea, sour plum drink, and lemon bread tea. Yeah. For a lot of people, the plum drink is not the go-to because it's very, very... <laughs> it, it does taste... No, no, and no! <laughs> no plum for me! No, it, it tastes pretty ancient. Hey, uh, cheers, hey, guys. Hey, I can tell you this. This, this is not what the ABGs drink. <laughs> All these drinks taste like something dried. This is the Jia Duo Bao. Honeysuckle, man, I don't know. Honeysuckle, get the... Oh, drink it. They drink said it. honeysuckle? Drink it. Suckle on it. Suckle on the honey. Let's go, bro! Cheers! <laughs> this is a sesame brown sugar pancake. Wow. This was super good. If you guys it eat is. the edge piece right here with a lot of the brown sugar. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I like the, the pieces with more Bro. sugar. I actually still love the pork and ginger scallion steamed jowses. I got to roll with my main man, Jiu Chai Hoods. The original one. You got to go with the fish dumpling, man. Wow. One, never had that before. Two, when I ate it, it was amazingly good. What do you think it is about it that makes ASEAN people avoid spots like this so much? I feel like there's a combination of it not being hipster, cool, not as modern. A lot of those people just want to focus on what's trendy. They want to go to fun things. And sometimes the traditional spots, they're not fun in the conventional sense. But it really takes you 30, 40 minutes out of your month. I mean, you go once a month. Here's why. 40 I, minutes. How many minutes are in a month? A lot of Chinese people who know like Chinese or Cantonese, they don't speak it when they go to like a Chinese restaurant. But like if I go to like a Chinese restaurant and the waiters or waitresses don't speak good English, I might as well just speak to them in Chinese and Cantonese, right? It keeps me speaking my language. Take Koreans, for example. They see another Korean, instantly they speak Korean to each other. Even though, you know, they born here, they raised up here the whole life, but they know how to speak the language, they just communicate with each other in Korean. There's a connotation that that's like old school. That's like only something you do with your parents or your grandparents. You know, it's not a language that you're gonna speak to your friends. Mm -hmm. I do think on the West Coast, there's some sense that it's not as cool or modern as being another type of Asian. Okay. And I'm not just talking about Korean, I'm talking about Japanese. Filipino. Even, even Filipino, Vietnamese, Chinese. It is the most traditional Asian group. There's just some sense that it makes it less cool. We spend a lot of time in New York and a lot of Chinese food in New York. I'm gonna say 626 has the best Chinese food in the country. You Kitchen got featured in LA Times. Got a pretty glowing review. This spot is super legit. What do you think are some things that it could do to make it cooler? Or it'll never be cool on the West Coast or in LA and it just has to be people accepting something that's conventionally not as cool as cool. Who got the responsibility? Is it on the people to come to this or to this to get cool? I feel like it's the people to come to this. If you try to make this cool, obviously you're losing the tradition and you're losing the authenticity. You know, don't always stick to what you eat like forever. You know what I'm saying? Always try new things. Especially if you do not visit China often. If you haven't been back to mainland China, which a lot of people have not, I'd say come to mainland China out here. More at least once uh, every three months. Extremely high eatability, guys. It is delicious. Specifically the zhenzhao, the steamed jiaozis here. Yeah. Given the certain alignment of factors, I think that their steamed dumplings here could be the best in America. David, you telling me that these are the best dumplings in America? 
in SoCal for sure. We did not necessarily eat everywhere in New York, so that's why it's hard to say, but there is our hella good. That's what we're trying to say. Thank you so much for watching that video. Shout out to You Kitchen, shout out to Mary Ai, and shout out to Launi, shout out to Dongbei, and shout out to Charles. All right, everybody, in the comments below, is it the responsibility of the modern young cool kids to try this traditional stuff or is it on the responsibility of these traditional spots to make themselves cooler and more appealing why don't you just meet me in the middle in the middle Bye -bye. all right everybody thank you so much for watching that video big shout out to you kitchen Shishin. I mean, you walk into the steam room I wish with some dumplings. I could steam. steam I wish I could tray and everything. I, I wish I could like steam it. How about this? I wish I could steam as much as the dumplings do here. Oh! Damn.